Welcome back to another episode of Small Business Dads. My name is Daniel Monday. Thanks for tuning in and checking us out for another week. Got a great little chat today with Matthew Harding from howtoplaythesax.com. Now, the thing I love about this chat, what Matthew's been able to do with a favorite hobby of his as a kid, he's been able to turn it into a business and a recurring business. So he's going to explain through some business models about how to take a normal business, face-to-face business, and make it more about delivering the product online. So if that's something you're interested in for what you do, and the beauty about it is doesn't matter what industry that you're in, we're going to chat about how to, that's possible and how easy it is in this day and age with the beauty of the internet. So check out what Matthew's got to say, share some great tips, and he's also worked out how to be a dad and a musician being able to play on stage with his kids as well. So he's got the best of both worlds. Check it out. You'll love the chat just as much as I did. Welcome back to another episode of Small Business Dads. Today I have uh, I have Matthew Harding with me from How to Play the Sax. How are you, Matthew? Very well, thanks, Daniel. How about yourself? Very good, thank you. Now, thanks for coming on today, and I look forward to hearing about what you do because it's a little bit different to the normal traditional service provider as such. And um, before we do find out a bit more about you know the sax, how to play the sax, and someone who's not musical like myself, which is I'm a bit curious to find out about, but Give us a bit more info about you, about your background, who you are, and about your family and so forth. Yeah, sure. Well, firstly, thank you for having me. This is awesome. Really, really, um, really pleased. Thank you. Uh, Well, what can I say? I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a musician. I'm a passionate saxophonist. I'm a performer. I'm a computer nerd. And my my vice is I'm an ice cream addict. I have a bit of a problem with ice cream, but don't tell anyone about that. Um, wrong with a bit of that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's, that's that's my secret shame, but that's okay. The saxophone is my um is my primary love, and so I've been lucky to play my sax all all across Australia and all around the world. Uh, I'm based in Melbourne. I have uh, one amazing wife. I have two amazing daughters, nineteen year old and sixteen year old, so teenagers. Uh, they are both heavily into music and acting and things as well which is awesome my 19 year old she's a she's a singer my 16 year old she's a cellist but like i say they're both actors they're both singers they're both dancers it's um we come from a bit of a bit of a performing family which is which is good that's pretty cool and obviously like i always like to ask what people like to do to get away from their business but i guess you've turned yours into a business so like i don't know do you have anything else apart from uh, apart from entertaining and so forth and music and yeah, I'm, I, I am fortunate in that my hobbies are uh, part of my business as well, which is, which is great. It's, it's, I'm, I'm kind of blessed in that regards. Uh, I have my family, we have a, a holiday house in, in a little town called Jamison, which is, in, which is near Mount Buller in central Victoria. And that's a beautiful place to be. So I love going there, the fresh air and, and the oxygen and the little rivers and the bush and the trees and feeding the birds. And it, that's a nice place to be. Nice. Well, I guess that's a nice little balance, isn't it? It gets you out of the busy life, I guess, if you're in and around the city all the time and you get that yeah. country getaway, which is always nice to get away from just everything being go, go, go all the time. Exactly. I'm, I'm in Melbourne, which is, you know, obviously a fairly large city, um, but, but Jamison is a very small town in the middle of, of, of central Victoria. It's, it's, just, it's just beautiful. So I'm, I'm lucky. I've got the best of both worlds. Nice. So what... Um, first got you into playing the sax like you know it's not so I guess it's you know when you're a kid there's so I guess we all get forced to play the recorder and mm. when you start off in primary school <laughs> people branch off into further instruments um yeah what made you go down the sax path well it's funny you should mention that being forced into playing recorder yes I um I actually enjoyed playing the recorder I'm a bit embarrassed to admit I had private recorder lessons when I was a little kid yeah, um, we, <laughs> I want the loaded question, actually. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I kind of I gathered that. That's that's why that's why I'm laughing. The um, my my father he played he plays he played the piano. So we again I came from a musical family, and when I was a little kid, I had piano lessons and organ lessons, and they it didn't quite work when my hands were sort of horizontal on a keyboard when I was little, but then when I got a, you know, early mid primary school, putting a blowing instrument into my mouth, like the recorder, that's where it, um, that's where it started. And then I moved on to clarinet and, and again, you know, recorder, clarinet, they're not overly, 
they're not overly cool. You don't, at the risk of phrasing things inappropriately, you don't, um, you don't attract members of, 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 of the gender that you're hoping to attract when you're playing the recorder or the clarinet, even as a young kid. <laughs> so saxophone was, was a bit cooler and a bit more macho. Um, well, so I guess, I don't know, it's probably, uh, you're probably sick of hearing it, but I just keep thinking of the Homer Simpson saxophone. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Well, yeah, Lisa Simpson is a, is a mentor and a, and a model, <laughs> role model of mine, yes. Nice. <laughs> right. So how many times have you had that question? Um, not very often, actually, but, but again, I, I do like Lisa Simpson. I like Zoot from The Muppets. Zoot from The Muppets was, a, um, was also a major influence on my, on my saxophone career. It probably shows my level of humour anyway if I'm, re- if I'm referring to The Simpsons. No, I love, I love The Simpsons. I actually um, I bought myself one of, the, one of the series cells. You know, you can buy one of the, um, the, little, the actual frames that we used in the, in oh, the various wow. cartoons. So I bought, I've got a couple of Lisa Simpson. They, um, they cost me far too much money, but, but they're really cool. I like them a lot. Well, it's a business expense, isn't it? Um, and for, yeah, I suppose I bought them a long time ago. <laughs> I bought them a long time ago. I don't think it counts. Fair enough. Well, <laughs> let's take that opportunity to, you know, obviously you played it as a kid and you love it and you were smart enough, I guess, to turn it into a business. So tell us more about that and how it all works for you. Well, I, 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 I'd like to, I'd love to agree with you there. Daniel, I'd love to say, yes, I am. I was smart enough, but it took, it's taken me kind of a, a long time to get here. It's always been a, it's always been a more than a hobby. Uh, you know, I've always played in bands. You know, I did my first pub gig when I was 16, um, which in Australia, that's a little bit under the, um, under the legal age. But well, if you looked old enough, right? it was old enough back in the day. There wasn't the ID I'm checks that they used. The- so that's is- exactly yes i got away um, with it so that's all right so i've always played in bands but no, but young yeah, young men i think uh and this is my opinion so you know I, I think young men are hopeless uh and so as an 18 year old i was going to be a rock star when i grew up but uh, i sat around and waited for the rock stardom to come to me uh and it didn't quite work out that way as um you know as 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 happens to a lot of a, a lot of people, I guess. So over, but the the computer has always fascinated me, uh, in you know in recent memory, you know, in the last twenty odd years, the internet has been a has been a fascination for me. So dabbling around with various internet shenanigans and then various music shenanigans and keep coming back to music. You know, I started doing music teaching at uni, but then that was back when there was there was hardly any jobs going here in Victoria, in Melbourne anyway. Uh, and so music never quite, never quite happened as I'd, as I'd hoped. But over the last few years, combining my music teaching with the internet, it's been, it's been really good and I'm absolutely loving it. Absolutely loving it. Online so, learning is, is just is incredible. Online teaching is equally incredible. So I guess, you know, you're obviously a bit tech savvy, but what um, initially led you down? Obviously, you know, a lot of music teachers, they'll just do the local classes and you do your local tutoring yep. and so forth. And yeah, primary so, schools and high schools of, yeah. of, in private teaching. Yes, exactly. I've, just, I've you know, done a bit that. Of coaching school kids or whatever. And so obviously with a bit of a spark in your head, like what led you down the path of the, um, you know, taking it all online, which you do now? I think it was kind of, it was partly a, it was partly a mindset. A mindset shift, I think, um, and 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 I think and I could be wrong. And stop me if I am wrong here, Daniel. I think you've done a similar thing with your DPM transformation, uh, you know, workout sort of idea. The the concept of working from a business perspective, working trading time for money, trading time for dollars, is one possible scenario, and there's nothing wrong with that. But then again, changing that to leveraging that and systemizing that and you know taking taking that to rather than working time for dollars is thinking more along the lines of a one-to-many approach Mm -hmm. if that makes sense so rather than doing one thing selling one thing moving on it's more a case of well if i do the work now and package it up in such a way i don't have i've already done it so i don't have to do it again 
and you know the the again the rise of the internet um particularly online learning platforms like udemy or skillshare or you know linkedin linkedin has a learning platform and there are many 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 others youtube you know there's a, there's a million things you can learn on youtube yep, good point. combining all that all with the ultimate goal of a, a, a recurring revenue model i think did it for me you know netflix again wanting to be the the obvious recurring revenue model there you know we a lot of us here in australia and all over the world we pay netflix you know x number of dollars every month mm. w without thinking a, a mobile phone plan we all do that so my logic was how do i get a recurring revenue model uh you know one-off saxophone individual lessons uh yeah great but it's still trading time for money time for dollars so focusing on the one to many was a mind shift thing for me that is working out nicely i think it's quite smart and at the end of the day there is a lot of industries that is appropriate for like you know you normally think the netflix and all that stuff it's obvious but then there is a lot of businesses that you wouldn't normally associate with it there's always an opportunity maybe for someone listening now there might be a way for them to you know have a look because it's something as simple i don't know how you run your back end but there's you know even just simple wordpress sites you can have membership plugins and all that that run with those so yeah that's exactly what i've got yeah yes. you don't need to have like a you know a degree in um, you know, computing studies or whatever to be able to knock it out. It's, um, no, far from it. It's actually surprisingly easy these days. And how do you normally run your course? Let's give everyone a bit of an insight for someone that may be interested or, you know, their kids may be like, uh, actually, let's wind it back a bit. Who is your target market? Do you normally work with the young, like student teenagers or like around your kid's age or, you know, more so the older ones that have got a bit of time to uh, scratch an itch, so to speak, if their kids are a bit older? A little of column A and a little of column B. I think the, um, you know, I have primary school students and secondary school students. So starting roughly age 11, um, 11 upwards to, to early to mid teens. I have private students who are in their 40s, 50s and 60s. Uh, some of my online students are actually in their 70s. And there's, um, there's one woman that I'm aware of you know, who's 80 something. Uh, so, you know, again, the beauty of the beauty of the niche i think you know we were talking about trading time for dollars another business concept that i've sort of been uh following the school of thought of is niching down and again I, as far as i can tell you do a similar thing there yeah. daniel with your you know small business dads uh you know we're talking small business and we're talking dads is you know that narrows the the general population fairly significantly same deal with your um your you know your uh your dpm transformation again uh, again stop me if i'm wrong but you're focusing no, on a specific no. niche you know women yeah, based in life. sydney yeah it's the same thing so the the reason i'm mentioning this is like you've just said well if somebody's listening how do you how do you how do they get a piece of that pie well niche niching down so my niche is beginner saxophone students um, whether that is an 11 year old or an 80 year old or someone who is uh, who's an empty nester so to speak or someone who's been locked at home for the last couple of months with yeah. nothing, nothing much else to do you know um, and you want to and they wanted to learn particularly for me it's it's rock soul funk and blues saxophone again from my niche I don't do jazz saxophone I don't do classical saxophone it's it's it, it, it is a niche um, and that works out well that's a good thing. So I teach, you know, rock, soul, funk, blues, saxophone lessons. I try and make it quick and easy. So uh, without reading music via my, um, my online saxophone lessons membership, uh, I cater for all ages. I try and keep it, keep it mostly as G rated as possible. Um, some of the songs are, you know, music, lyrically suggestive music these days in general pop culture, but Hey, maybe I'm just, getting old but then well, again the same, same in the 60s you know they, even the old stuff like you go yeah. back into some of those older uh, if you dig a bit deeper and listen to lyrics you think hang on a minute that didn't really stand the test of time no no appropriate stuff if you go back and look hard enough but you know everyone if you're only offended by what you choose to be offended by yeah exactly exactly so you know catering for what uh, what i think my market is looking for and that is in my case rock saxophone lessons yeah well, I guess, like you said, it's a good way to meet someone that you're trying to impress. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, and if you're not doing the classical and the easy listening stuff, you don't have to worry about Kenny G for your competition. 
That's exactly right. That's exactly <laughs> right. Mind you, he's um he's not a bad sax player. He's got the he's made his name for being you know very nice and 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 easy listening. But I've seen a few of his um his rock and and funk gigs. He he's incredible. Oh, there you go. I didn't know that. I have to dig a bit deeper into the vault. Yeah, it's 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 quite surprising actually. Yes, I was surprised too. Hang on, that's not Kenny G. <gasps> that's Kenny G. Wow. Maybe that's what he was always one to be, but I, I think so. Yeah. yeah, he fell into a niche as well. Yeah, yes. well, well, look, yeah. Uh, so I think if we can focus on that niche thing, I think it's important. Like for you, obviously, uh, for most people, a niche. Well, for me, for example, a niche is more an age group as such. Um, but I think for you, like, it doesn't have to be just targeted. Like you said, you've got anyone from like early teens right up okay. to the older people, and I guess for so someone that's a bit to older too. You now we always like to think of people as they get older one of the ways they always say to you know to help um, prevent um decline a fast decline you know, mentally um and dementia and all that sort of stuff is to keep um is to keep mentally active and i guess if you're learning an instrument that's a whole part of that puzzle as well yes physical coordination and hand-eye coordination yeah, yeah mental and physical yes and well and really. so Let's focus on some of the uh, the positives that you have. You're more, I'm assuming you've played some pretty cool gigs over the years or you've had some pretty cool, like obviously, you know, working with 80-year-olds and teaching them how to play sax must be pretty uh, fulfilling as well. Like, have you got any highlights that you want to share with us? I do, yes. Uh, I, I'm from a, I've got a couple of, I can instantly think of a couple off the top of my head. Um, from a, from a, from a business perspective, like you've just like you've just said, the, the teaching the brand new beginners, I, I, I get a lot of enjoyment and personal satisfaction out of that. Uh, you know, I got a I got a message just recently from some somebody's granddad, some granddad. You know, he's in he's in his seventies. He played Happy Birthday to his young grand grandson, you know, two or three year old grandson uh, at, at a recent you know the kid's birthday and. How cool is that? That yeah. you know, here's this granddad who's never played a musical instrument in his life, but he's got up there in front of all the little kids and played "Happy Birthday." So, yeah. okay, yeah. Love that. that's really awesome. Is that going to does that count as rock stardom? Well, you know, probably <laughs> not. But for him, yeah, that, that that's awesome. That's really really awesome. Uh, I, from a um, from a, a, a again from a from a. A, a personal, a student perspective. You know, I've had messages from people all over the world who, who have done their first gig. Um, you know, they've joined their mates. Their mates always played guitar, and their mates are always playing at pubs. Oh, can I join in? And finally, they've done it. You know, that's awesome. There's been a couple of. It seems to be a thing at the moment. I don't know why, but hey, let's just go with it. That when people get married they bust out something that their their partner did not know that they could do so just recently um here in melbourne i helped a, a young woman she was 30 odd to learn a particular song she'd never played saxophone or any musical instrument before but at her wedding she's busted out the sax and um and she's she's laid one on the crowd and here it is woohoo fantastic and the, the husband's gone wild and the crowd's gone wild it was amazing and similarly there's um there's a guy one of my members in the Netherlands, I think, yeah, some Northern Europe somewhere. I think it's the Netherlands. He's doing the same thing. He's getting married in a couple of months, and he wants to um, he, he wants to surprise his his fiance. Uh, from a getting back to your question there, from a personal perspective, yes, I am fortunate that because my daughters are performers, I've been able to share a stage with them many many times which is kind of really cool it's it 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 it, it, it kind of alternates i use that for good and for evil um you know whether i'm uh, whether i am the 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 colleague or the or the co-performer or the embarrassing dad i can use that to my advantage <laughs> well, so, <laughs> at that point of view anyway it must be pretty cool to be able to get up there and play with your kids and oh yeah and, and they're they're better than i am they're better looking than i am they're smarter than i am they're more talented than i am it's really awesome so being able to you know we went to we did a tour a couple of years ago we we're involved with a a musical theatre group here in Melbourne and we did a tour of across Germany and across the UK a couple of years ago so England Wales Scotland it, it was amazing we did so performing with my daughters and this group you know overseas and then last year I was at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival uh, performing again and the year before with my youngest she and I went to Edinburgh Fringe and we spent a month 
doing two gigs a day for a month in Edinburgh with me and my daughter and this musical theatre group. They're called New Works, New Works Theatre. Amazing, incredible. So is that enjoyable or is that tiring or, you know, a bit of both? We a bit of doing a couple both. of gigs a day. Yeah, it was kind of, it was hardcore actually. We, yeah. we needed a nap in the middle of the day. There wasn't a lot of, um, wasn't a lot of sightseeing actually, but because, you know, you do the morning gig and then come home and have a bit of rest and both me and my, my 15 year old daughter at the time, we both needed a snooze, go back and do the evening gig and it was great fun. We won the, we won the best overseas show award for the nice. Edinburgh Fringe Festival, which again, sharing that with, with my daughter, uh, amazing. You can't, I can't describe how incredible that is. Well, it's not an experience you would normally have as, you know, as a dad to be able to share. Um, well, obviously, you can do hobbies and stuff together, but especially on a stage like that, that's pretty cool and a big public audience, which I guess has changed with the way the world has gone at the moment. I guess there's no travel and so forth at the moment. How has that affected things? Um, yeah, well, we, we were toying with going to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival again this year. I, I went last year and the year before. Uh, but, you know, Edinburgh has been cancelled, as has travel all over the world. Yeah, well. um, personally, my gigs have all stopped, uh, as has my oldest daughter. You know, she's 19 and she, she does a lot of, um, she has a lot of performance opportunities. So hers have all just stopped, door shut, full stop. Um, so that's, that hasn't been obviously desirable. Uh, but the beauty of the internet mm -hmm. and the online business model uh, and particularly the online learning business model, uh, it's been it's been quite good over the last. You know, we're recording this what is a mid June in 2020. Um, over the last couple of months, business has been good from a from an online perspective. That's awesome. Yeah. Like I guess you know, like for a traditional, uh, so I guess musician as such, like if you were relying on the face to face contact, of a yeah, gig or having to get out and perform a gig all of a sudden overnight through no fault of your own, bam, it's done. Yep. When you, know, you can put all the energies into that online thing and focus all the energies towards that and you're flying. That's awesome. Yes. And, you know, and, and just not necessarily from the musician's perspective uh, or the performer's perspective, but the venue perspective and the staff involved in the venues as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nightmare, nightmare scenario. But I won't, you know, I did, had, no one knew that the, 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 the lockdowns were going to happen, you know, global pandemics. It's not really front of mind for most people, really. On the well, global scale. Earth, I guess. Certainly before, certainly before 2020 anyway, no one had really, it certainly didn't render too many people's consciousness. But so the idea of, like I was saying before, not trading time for dollars not that i mean that that's the easy that is the easy option that is the option that most of us do we get up we go to work we get paid and we come home again but like i was saying before trading that mind changing that mindset pivoting that mindset pivoting the business you know the, that's where the online thing starts to come to its own the different business model comes from its own. Nothing wrong with trading time for dollars. Nothing wrong with creating a widget, selling a widget, and then building another widget and selling another widget. Nothing wrong with that. Millions of us do that all over the world. But thinking about time for dollars versus scaling that idea one to many approach is something that I'm pleased that I've been able to do uh, and double down on over the last, um, last few months. Well, yeah, it was lucky you had the foresight, I guess, um, to be able to do that. Obviously, you know, um, you know, maybe I like to think there's a positive in every situation and maybe someone's listening now is, has realised after a big hit to their business that maybe they need another avenue. Um, there's always an option and uh, something like um, myself, Zoom, I wouldn't have thought as a possibility, you know, four months ago, five months ago, was, you know, I never even entered my mind. The yeah, exactly. Exactly. Things, just because you never had to. Mm. Uh, but through a crisis, there's always an opportunity that can arise. So hopefully people will take that out of the thing. Um, yeah. The last that, couple of months. Pivoting the business is, um, is something that if people haven't done already, then should certainly, in, in my opinion, should consider not, not changing direction totally, but having another option up your sleeve as a business owner, I think, is, yeah, well, is very important. Like yeah. even if you're, you know, you might be a tradie and a plumber, for example, or, you know, we had 
you know, if you've got a, an issue, you might be able to film a simple video and, you know, this is how you do this and this is how you do that. And yep. who knows, yep. that's just off the top of my head, but there's always options no matter what industry you're in, even if you're in one that you wouldn't traditionally think can go online, I guess there's always an option. Yeah, exactly. And like restaurant owners have done and cafe owners have done yep. relatively recently. Yep. They've changed from an in-house model to a, um, a home delivery model, uh, a takeaway kind of idea. Uh, I know that our local cafe down the road from where I live, they've, um, they've been offering online cooking classes. Yeah, well, you, know. you know, same idea. They've pivoted. They're still in their same industry because yep. you know, you're in your industry, I'm in my industry, they're in their industry. Uh, but pivoting i don't know i'm not sure if i'm if pivoting is the right word having another string to your bottom well that's it it's just yeah, yeah a bit of um yeah just not putting all your chips in one basket so you can cash something in when you need to and yep. put more focus where it needs to but uh, let's switch back to the parenting side of things for a minute i love to get everyone's two cents and your kids are a bit older than mine so maybe you know something that i can store away for another 10 years or so for when my when my girls are a bit older, what would you say your biggest tip is for someone who's got kids your age and how you manage to be able to have a relationship when often uh, for a lot of teenagers, it's not really cool to hang out with your dad? Yeah, yes, it's a bit like that. I was um, I was actually listening to one of your previous episodes. Uh, I can't remember what episode it was, but it was, um, it was relatively recently. It was Mark from... Where was he from? He was from Web Zulu, something. Yeah. Like that. Um, and he was, uh, I recall, he was saying a, a similar thing. He, uh, from memory, he had an older, an older teenager and a couple of yeah. younger. Older thing. Yeah, yeah. And it was the same kind of idea. I think. So I think to answer your question, blink and you miss it. Unfortunately, I'm finding that. Uh, hang on. Where's the last? Where's the last 15, 16, 19, 20 years gone? Somebody's taken. Somebody's taken two of my decades. Hang on. There's um, a lot of musicians that could say that from the 80s, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Obviously, I haven't taken enough drugs, so, so, <laughs> which, is, which is a good thing. Which is good. Say no to drugs. Um, so to answer your question, focus on the moments, I think, right. to you know, make, 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 make use of the little things. When, the little, when, a, when a young kid says, pay attention to me over here, look at me, look at me, daddy. Um, actually, look. Yeah. Actually, look, be involved, I, I think. Join in their activities. i um, not suggesting that you need to, you know, you need to get dressed up every day, put on a fairy outfit and be a, and be a fairy in the make-believe in the cubby house at the back. But, but, you know, it's been done. It's good fun. The kid, kids remember those moments rather than buying presents oh, yeah. or, you know, oh, daddy's busy at the moment. Can, I'll, I'll talk to you later on. Because um, later on, it, it's suddenly suddenly gone. I find that um, I'm making use of little things like driving, uh, taking the kids to their activities. I love it. Absolutely love it. I know a lot of parents who don't. They loathe getting in the car and driving their kids to you know, dance lessons or tennis or, or footy or, or whatever, you know, whatever the kids. Kids have a lot, of, a lot of opportunities these days for activities. But I love the time in the car because it's, it's, it is almost one-on-one -on -one and you're enclosed in your own little bubble and being able to converse about what you're going to do. You know, you're going to tennis lessons or you're going to music lessons or, or, or the footy or, what, or the shops even, you know, talking about what you're going to do or talking about what you've just done. Being present in their little world at that moment, I think is my, um, my biggest, biggest tip. Join in if you can. I've taken that to the extreme with my kids from a performance perspective. Um, not quite the Partridge family, but if you remember that kind of, that brought the Brady Bunch, but, yep. but, but um, they had a band, didn't they? Brady Bunch. It's not quite that, that, it's not quite that to that extent, but, you know, just be involved. Be involved as much as you can. Well, I guess that's, that's perfect advice. That's all you need. And it's, that's what I love getting those insights from different people at different stages of their lives and their kids' ages. I think it's awesome that, you know, someone might hear something and, and you never know what someone needs to hear at that particular moment in time. And it's something that might have been said a hundred times before, but that particular time that someone's listening, if the penny can drop and if it hits home and if it makes someone be a bit more focused or, you know, a bit more quality time, then I think we're on a winner. Yeah, we uh, we have regular we have we have dinner together every night, and you know, and have for the kids' entire lives, uh, and that spawns some wonderful family conversations every night. It's a it's again it's a nice little bubble, that that is nice family bubble, that that 
I think resonates. The kids remember dinner conversations from 10, 15 years ago. And again, that's, that's really nice. That's really nice from a dad perspective. I think so too. And it's nice, uh, you know, they can reflect back on and, and uh, as they get older as well. And, you know, when we're no longer around. That's right. That's yeah, right. Yes. Obviously we're not going to knock us off soon, but. Yeah, touch wood. We'll be still, <laughs> still here for a while yet. Yeah, being, yeah. being embarrassing dads, certainly. Yes. Exactly. Well, that's the yes. job, isn't it? But, <laughs> but there's one question I love to ask before we wrap it up. If you could go back to any stage, what would you tell your younger self? Can be, you know, any, you know, when you're a young fellow before you become a dad, maybe when you stay in the business, you know, what would you say? What would I say to my younger self? I think what, I think I mentioned before, young men are hopeless. So probably I wouldn't listen. No, um, I don't think any of us will be. <laughs> yes. You've got but, to listen and this is going to. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Well, I would say that you need it would be a good idea to deliberately follow your dreams don't lose sight of your passions and dreams listen to and take advice from others but ultimately is up to you it is rare that someone is going to hand you on a silver platter the record contract so you're going to be a rock star or you know here's 10 million bucks go your hardest uh, it doesn't happen very often so my advice to myself would be do what you want to do follow your passions follow your dreams don't lose sight of them but ultimately it's up to you so therefore you need to make it happen nice i think on like on your side obviously you know people of our age and you know, a little bit older and so forth had it a bit harder especially from a music point of view because nowadays you can put stuff on soundcloud and youtube and all these other avenues spotify and that and yeah easy to publish and you know and but, you know, not everyone ends up a rock star, obviously, but, you know, some people have turned into bigger things because of something as simple as a SoundCloud, um, you know, tune. Yes. So I guess there's a lot more options these days. And for some, uh, for a young kid now, they've got a lot more, um, a lot more things where they may not need to go back and tell their younger self if they're, uh, if they're smart enough to listen now. The internet is an amazing resource. Daniel, as you, as you obviously know, uh, and, and younger people, teenagers particularly, but, you know, 20-somethings as well, they have the power of, of business in their, in their hands, in their phones, you know. My, my 19-year-old daughter, she's got thousands and thousands of Instagram followers, uh, and they, a, a lot of them hang off every word and everything she says and everything she does, and it's kind of, it's kind of scary, actually, the, the power that that can that can wield and and again using that for good it's incredible incredible yeah. opportunities the internet use the internet exactly well i can say i'm glad there's no uh, there was no instagram around when i was 18 or 19 because some of the photos wouldn't have been very flattering but <laughs> no no <laughs> nor complimentary from my end either yes <laughs> Well, well mate, in wrapping up, I loved having a chat and I really liked hearing about something that's a little bit different that we don't normally get to chat normally. We're a bit more, you know, it's a bit more serious on the business and that, which is awesome because that's what, you know, that's obviously people's passions. But I love that you've been able to turn what you loved and what you've been able to love since, well, since you were a kid uh, into a business and to diversify that into you know, being such a powerful online thing. Now, where can people find, if someone is listening and interested in how to, play the sax like you know how does it work for you with their mem um, i know you mentioned your membership site what's how would someone get started yeah well um my website my name's matthew from how to play the uh, and essentially how to play the is a is a subscription based saxophone online saxophone lessons membership particularly catering for rock soul funk and blues saxophone uh, I've put together a bit of a um, a bit of a deal for your listeners there, Daniel. Um, how to play the sax dot com forward slash small business dads. Uh, if, if, if listeners are interested in learning the saxophone themselves, or they've got kids, or know of someone who um, who would be into that kind of thing, how to play the sax dot com forward slash small business dads. Go there and get ten percent off ongoing for as long as um as long as they would like awesome mate i appreciate that and it's 
pretty timely with the school holidays coming up soon that I think uh, it might be something if someone's looking for some time to keep the kids occupied or whatever, then there you go. Yeah, there's been, there's been a couple of um, mums and, and dads and kids who've joined together, it's been, um, which has been nice too, actually. They've been sharing that as a family thing as well. Well, there you go. That's another bit of bonding time to have with your kids as well if you want to learn how to play an instrument that's, uh, that's a pretty cool sound. And uh, so I might... Um, I might put, well, we'll have the, uh, the website page for Small Business Dads on uh, for your site, but I think we might put, just for a bit of fun, I'll try and track down that, uh, that Lisa Simpson video as well. Just Excellent, to, yeah, yes. Fun. But um, yeah, thank you for your time, Matthew. Definitely, we'll put the link in the show notes as well for and on the webpage for your special offer. So definitely jump on and take advantage of that if you are keen to find out about an instrument. Thanks for your time, Matthew Harding. Howtoplaythesax.com and let's get amongst it. Thanks heaps for having me, Daniel. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. All the best. Well, there you go. What a cool chat. I loved how Matthew was able to turn a passion of his that he's had since he was a little kid and turn it into a business, especially a business that he can do from anywhere. And he has customers from all over the world that join him. Now, if you are interested in learning how to play the sax, like Matthew mentioned, he's got that special offer just for listeners like you of Small Business Dads. 10% off each month for as long as you're a member. The link will be in the show notes, but if you're in front of a computer right now and you're not driving or walking about, howtoplaythesax.com slash smallbusinessdads is the special link for you to get in the back door. So if you or one of your kids is keen to learn how to play the sax, especially with the school holidays just around the corner, definitely make the most of that offer. One more thing before we wrap up, I appreciate you for tuning in and listening each week, and I love the if you can share it with someone who you know may benefit. So if you know if you've got a mate or someone who you know who's a dad, small business owner, point them in the direction of this little show. Hopefully something that we share in one of our little episodes and delve into our back catalog. We've got about 27 episodes up now. Go and find something. Don't be put off by what the topic is of the industry that the listener, um, that the guest is on because you're going to find some great, little, some great little tips and nuggets in each of those little episodes. Now, all those can be found in the back catalog on whatever app you're listening to or on our website, smallbusinessdads.com.au. And until next week, thanks for tuning in. Daniel Monday, Small Business Dads, over and out.